Hello everyone. So today I am going to start the next session of AI project model. This is the second session for class 10th and today I am going to tell you about data modeling. Sorry, AI modeling. The last lecture ends with the ended with the data exploration, the visualization of data. I just want to recap it. As you know, when the data is collected with the second stage of data acquisition, we get something like this, this tabular data. And if we will convert it in visual form, we will get this graphical type of data. It is not very clear, but something like this we get out of stage 3 data exploration. After data exploration, you can get you, different type of visualization like this. This is the knowledge graph or you can say relationship diagram between different entities. This is also an example of visualization of data. This flowchart is another example of data through which you can show any process, relationship between the different steps of a process and this plotting diagram can give you the visualization of any continuous data. So these are the different types of data visualization forms. So once we visualize the data, what happens? Did we need to found various possible patterns out of given data set? And then how will uh, we visualize the data? Let's say we make a line graph from the data set and got the pattern in visual. Then we can easily predict how the model will read with the upcoming data set. Okay. Now, uh, it is uh, different that how we are getting the data in the form of these graphics, these plots, this uh, uh, relationship diagram, but this similar diagram cannot be stored or cannot be fed into the machine. As we know, machines know only binary language, the most basic form of numbers, which is binary, zeros and ones, because machine knows only binary language. And when it comes to discovering patterns and trend in data, the machine goes in for mathematical representation of the same. Means, Visualization of the data comes in the form of patterns, but that pattern should be converted into something like mathematical expression and algorithm. And this algorithm, this mathematical form of the uh, data visualization is the ability of our AI model and which is the heart of our AI model. The efficiency of any AI model depends on this mathematical relationship of the parameters of data set. So, AA model can be classified into hmm, AI models can be classified into learning based model and rule based model. This is the fourth stage of mo uh, uh, AI model, sorry AI project cycle that is modeling and once we get the trends which is uh, the data follows and we have to select an AI model um, according to the aim of our model. Whatever the aim decided at this stage of problem scoping is the base of deciding the AI model. Suppose I need to predict the value. How? How will we predict the value? First of all, I need to understand what are the various models available to select from and in that case, what we need to do, we have to go through a number of AI models available. And in class 9, we also read these two types of AI model approaches, rule-based approach and the learning-based approach. You already done it in class 9. And now in rule-based approach, the model is a static, which means, for example, I have a set of 100 images and I put my data set into an AI model and train it. But the model will respond to only those 100 data set which I fed into the machine. That means rule-based approach. The model would not be able to make considerable changes in its course. So it is not able to adapt to the new type of data. I am uh, giving you an example. Uh, first, let's see what the rule-based approach is. Rule-based approach refers to the AI modeling where the rules are defined by the developers. 
and the machine follows the rules or instructions means mentioned by the developer as it is and perform its task accordingly means there is no change whatever is decided in the ai model will not be changed for the whole uh, process of ai project cycle we have give i have given you an example of chatbot activity in this you have uh, made conversation with these chatbots and you have found that few of these chatbots are actually um, uh, rule based It means whatever you are asking is totally rule based giving the uh, totally rule based answer as you are doing in inquiry system and gas booking and uh, recharging these type of things all uh, all depend on the rule based approach but the chatbots which are learning this give you smart and the different type of answer which can change according to the experience of the chatbot with the conversation with different type of people and many students share their conversation and they surprise with the type of conversation a chatbot uh, making with them all these uh, type of conversation made because of their experience chatbots experience they are reacting just like normal human beings so these are the smart chatbots now i am going to take an example of rule based approach suppose uh, there is an e example in your book i want to show you that example hmm. ah there is an example in your book suppose you have to ha ah, you have a data set this one you have a data set which tells you about the conditions on the basis of which one can decide if an elephant may be spotted or not while on safari so in this example we have a set of parameters outlook temperature humidity and wind and on these parameters we have to decide the elephants uh, can be spotted in safari or not now you take various possibilities of these parameters and see in which case the elephant may be spotted and in which case it may not and after looking and seeing these type of cases you have to decide the algorithm so example is you have a data set which tell you about the conditions on the basis of which one can decide if the elephant may be spotted or not while on safari the parameters are outlook temperature humidity and wind now you take various possibilities of these parameters and see in which case the elephant may be spotted and in which case it may not so this is the data set now see 1 2 3 4 5 there are five parameters outlook may be sunny overcast and rain there are three possibilities with outlook and there are three possibilities with temperature it may hot it may mild it may cool and there are two possibilities with humidity it may high it may normal and there are two possibilities with wind it may weak and strong and on all the combination of these parameters you, we can get the result of elephant is spotted yes or no maybe an a any of these parameter may affect the decision of this uh, data set or may not now you how you will get the algorithm the process of making that algorithm is first pick the best attribute and feature best attribute or feature means the best suited attribute which can give you the quick and correct result in this case you can see if the outlook is overcast this one if outlook is overcast then you can see the elephant is spotted yes and in all the cases you can see is overcast and elephant is spotted yes again here two cases of overcast and the elephant is spotted yes so it means if whenever the outlook is overcast the elephant is spotted it's sure so you can make it in your decision tree the visualization of the data that outlook is having three possibilities sunny overcast and rainy but if it is overcast it sure that the elephant is spotted yes okay so another thing okay go back to the previous slide oh previous stage wait a minute so 
see the another case now if uh, outlook is sunny and if it is rainy now two cases left what what is happening with sunny is the temperature affecting the sunny uh, outlook or not now check if the temperature is hot in the case of sunny outlook and if the temperature is cool in the case of sunny outlook this one and this one in both the cases outlook is sunny and temperature is in first case hot and in second case cool but the result is huh, yes when the sunny outlook and the temperature is out the result is no and when the outlook is sunny and temperature is cool the result is yes okay so here temperature is i think affecting but it's not sure we have to check another example that sunny the second example the sunny outlook temperature hot but it is yes again it is showing elephant is spotted no another example this one the outlook is sunny oh one more possibility temperature is mild and elephant is spotted yes in cool it is yes in mild it is yes so in two cases it is yes so i think this temperature parameter is not affecting a lot you can check another parameter again this humidity hmm. now in case of humidity there are two possibilities high and normal if outlook is sunny humidity is high in all the cases check this sunny high sunny high again one more no so in all the cases of sunny outlook high humidity elephant is spotted no and the cases when the outlook is sunny and humidity is normal then the elephant is spotted yes so this way we have to find all the possibilities and we have to make this decision you can do it yourself it may take time but you can make these type of decision trees for visualizing the data you can try yourself and you can check the result so similarly the rainy this parameter is also affecting if the outlook is rainy and the wind is strong then no spotting if wind is weak then yes so this is the whole decision tree which we will get from this data set now if we have get this data set and after that visualization of the data then we have to make the model so for uh, modeling we have to first train the machine after looking through Uh, all the cases we feed this data into the machine along with the rules decision tree ne kya diya decision trees help uh, tree help you to make the rules and when this rules and the data you fed into the machine then it uh, machine will give the possibilities the machine trains on this data and now it is ready to test it now this is an example of testing data the outlook is overcast temperature is normal it is normal and wind is weak now you have to test this data and try and tell me the prediction elephant is spotted or not this is very 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 easy example you can try it once okay now check the first parameter is outlook it is overcast now go to the previous slide where we have uh, the decision tree go to the slide okay see when the outlook is overcast the result is yes so prediction is yes no need to go further as we know if the outlook is overcast the elephant will be spotted it's sure so we don't need to go further so this way the testing data will be predicting the result so no need to consider these three parameters we got the result just with this one testing data one parameter of the testing data on the basis of this testing data set now the machine will predict if the elephant has been spotted before or not and will display the prediction to us yes we have got the result elephant will be spotted so this rule based approach uh, this is known as rule based approach because we fed the data along with rules to the machine 
and the machine after getting trained on them is now able to predict the answers for the same. Rules are given and machine get the training and then it can predict the answer on the basis of the rules. The drawback of rule based approach is that it is static. The learning is static. If some changes in the behavior or pattern happen, then the rules uh, which we fed in the machine cannot change. That's why the rule based approach is static. static. Example, you have 100 images, a set of 100, 100 images and uh, I have put some data in the machine and trained it. But the model will respond to only those 100 data set, those 100 images which I fed into the machine. That means rule based approach would not be able to make considerable changes in its code and to be able to adapt the new type of data which comes. Uh, suppose you have given some overcast mein kuch aapne parameter diye, and if there is any other parameter added, the machine will not take this and not consider this. It is not dynamic, it is totally static, it is not surely, it is not uh, feed, giving the feedback, uh, taking the feedback, no feedback taking, never going uh, to give any new come up, new taken up data. So this is totally static. It is its drawback. Few more things I want to mention here. The machine once trained does not take into consideration any changes made in the original training data set. If some behavior changes, then we cannot make any change in original data set. That is if we try testing the machine on a data set which is different from the rules. Aap jo testingly data dal rahe ho, usme aapne jo set abhi diya, उसमें कुछ नया हमने डाल दिया कुछ डिफरेंट डाल दिया देन दैट एंड वी फेड दैट डेटा एट द ट्रेनिंग स्टेज द मशीन वुड फेल ऑन इट एंड विल नॉट लर्न फ्रॉम इट्स मिस्टेक वंस ट्रेन द मॉडल कैन नॉट इंप्रूव इटसेल्फ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ फीडबैक नथिंग न्यू कैन हैपन विद रूल बेस्ड अप्रोच सो एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द रूल बेस्ड अप्रोच इज मशीन लर्निंग एज इट वाज स्टैटिक सो द न्यू एक्सटेंशन वाज मशीन लर्निंग and in that case, the machine adapts to change in data and rules and follow the adapted, updated path only. While a rule-based model does not. So this is an example I am showing how the machine learn with the uh, learning-based approach. It is learning itself. Whatever is happening with it, the machine learning with the experience and updating itself. So it is showing you the example of learning based approach of the machines. I can give you an example which is available on YouTube. I have put it a link here. This is an example of racing game which is totally AI based learning based approach. Let's see. The new MotoGP game, MotoGP19, is released now. It's out on the shelves. And Tom Errington and I have been lucky enough to play the game, so we're going to have a little chat about everything you need to know about this game. And Tom, there's one place where I think we have to start, because this is the thing that the producers of the game have really been pushing, and that is neural AI. Now, that's what they're calling it, not what we call it. But AI is always a big topic in racing games. It can be very difficult to get it right. What have Milestone done this time with MotoGP19? Yeah, I mean, Neuro AI sounds like something Skynet would produce, but kind of a little bit like that. It's a medical company primarily, and a scientific company that has this AI that they've used over a very long time, developed it. And for the first time ever, this company, Aerobix, has worked with Milestone to create an AI for the game. And the difference with this one is it's not an AI that has been programmed to do a certain thing in this certain situation or react to the player. The player, the player makes a difference to the arrow. In this case, they drop uh, a rider in the game and they give it no instructions whatsoever, so it goes off and learns. So the video I got showed was very funny around Austin where it was jump starting, struggling, wobbling, hitting walls and all sorts. And every time it did something, they would give it, uh, say, a minus 10 for that's not what you should do, plus 10 if that's what you should do. 
And over the time, through many, many simulations, I was told numbers like 30,000, 50,000 times, it would get better and more intelligent. Eventually, you'd go from that shaky, struggling to stay on a bike to a great racing line, high speed, and being really competitive. And then because you can't really predict what it's going to be like in the pack race, they would make the race start at different corners at each track, so you get an idea of what it would be like if 20 riders went through this corner, how it should behave, how it should react. And we both said it, and when we've played it so far, you can really notice how different that AI feels compared to any other racing game, really. So it's not about, really, the AI learning how to race you as the human player. The, the AI is, is doing its own thing, and it just so happens that you end up on track with them as if, effectively, you're racing a bunch of real-world opponents. Yeah, it's very much a realistic thing. If you were to start riding a powerful bike today, you'd be terrible at first. You'd learn to get better and better, and you'd learn independently, and then try and apply that in real situations that arise to you. It's, it's very much authentic. Now, that's the big selling point, I think, of this game. It has been interesting to play it so far and see that to have AI that's fallible is very interesting. They do make interesting overtaking manoeuvres, but they also make interest in mistakes so, so that's, that's that's all good fun, fun. and uh, another so you can see that uh, this game is showing you the just like human being behavior the model the object which is uh, means the biker it is totally learning as we normal human being learning the mistakes will give it uh, negative remark negative regard sorry negative score or tokens and the uh, correct things uh, will give it uh, scores positive tokens so with this positive and negative tokens the uh, biker learns similarly we are doing in our real life this is an example of a learning based approach of ai model so the learning based approach is again of three types supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning in this is a brief introduction of these three approaches are given in supervised learning. Determine the, uh, the AI model, determine the relationship through training. In unsupervised learning, discover new patterns without any uh, supervised training and reinforcement learning learns by rewarding action. This is the example of the game which I have shown just now. And the game was uh, based on this reinforcement learning based approach where the machine is get, giving the rewards for the good action, correct action and giving the negative tokens for the, uh, for the wrong one. You have all played such type of games where you are getting the negative scores and positive scores for the uh, right and wrong actions. So this type of learning is reinforcement learning. Now the two another type is supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Now the learning based approach refers to, this is the definition you can say, learning based approach refers to the AI modeling where the machine learns by itself. See, the machine is learning, machine is to taking the action, it is getting the reward and the reward frequency give the uh, experience that what it is doing, right or wrong thing, this way it is learning. So this is the learning based approach. Now. AI model gets trained on the data fed to it. Whatever actions actions we are taken with the data uh, taken with the machine means uh, whatever data you are feeding in the machine, give the training to the AI model, and then AI model is able to design a model a algorithm which is adaptive to the change in it. Means a model modify itself with the training of the data. This is the learning based approach. So again, learning based approach is of two types, supervised, sorry, three types, supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So the first topic I am taking is supervised learning. Supervised, uh, supervised learning in this, uh, the goal is to find specific relationships or structure in the input data and allow us to effectively produce correct output. Suppose uh, in supervised learning model, the data set which is fed to the machine is labeled. Uh, we are giving a set of data in which uh, we are labeling uh, fruits name. Two set of fruits we have uh, fed in the machine. One is apple and another is banana. And all are labeled. And if I will give 
the training and after training if i will give the testing data which is any random pattern any random image let's see orange then the machine will supervise it supervise it and find the uh, probability of the uh, two label data set which fed in the into the machine which is similar to this uh, new uh, testing data so orange will get the probability of apple so it will give the result apple so this is supervised learning where we give the labeled data inside the machine and algorithms predict the output from the input data which we have inserted in the machine with the label so with in this algorithm we can classify the data means uh, apple and banana this is the classification and we can reg uh, do the regression means uh, we can create plus see this here here if data set is inserted in the machine fed in the machine the machine can check the algorithm run the algorithm on the basis of rules fed into the machine and classify it in two groups and if i'm giving you the example of this apple and banana see few images of apple fed into the machine in the data set and few images of banana fed into the machine all are labeled all are labeled all bananas are labeled as banana and apple are labeled as apple and then machine get training with this data set and after this the machine can give you the result here it is showing the example of rule based but i am giving you the same data set example if we are giving the random data testing data as orange the machine can find the similar type of set, uh, similar type of image from these two data set uh, to orange hai to aapko kya lagta hai orange banana to predict kar nahi sakta so machine will give you the result apple this is a classification type of uh, approach and the another is regression in regression machine will uh, check the relationship between the entities kaun sa बहुत करीब मतलब करीब का रिलेशनशिप लग रहा है इस ऑब्जेक्ट का वो वो रिजल्ट दे देगा सो नेक्स्ट इज अनसुपरवाइज लर्निंग इन अनसुपरवाइज लर्निंग मॉडल वर्क्स ऑन अनलेबल डेटा सेट देयर इज नो लेबलिंग द डेटा सेट इज टोटली अनलेबल्ड दिस मींस दैट द डेटा व्हिच इज फेड इनटू द मशीन इज रैंडम and there is a possibility that the person who is training the model does not have any information regarding it it's totally random data and the unsupervised learning models are used to identify relationships patterns and trends out of the data which is fed into it it helps the user in understanding what the data is about and what are the major features identified by the machine by machine in it for example you have a random data of 100 dogs in images and you uh, wish to understand some pattern out of it you would feed feed this data into supervised learning model and would train the machine of, on it after training the machine would come up with pattern which it uh, was able to identify out of it the machine might come up in uh, with a pattern which are already known to the user like color or it might even came up with something very unusual like size of the dogs the shape of the ears the uh, hair on the body anything and on any of the feature it will give you the result it is exactly is showing you the result of clustering there are again two type of modeling clustering and dimensionality redu reduction so i am giving the example of clustering so clustering refers to the unsupervised learning algorithm which can cluster the unknown data according to the patterns or trend identified out of it jaise aap dekhte ho na aapke paas agar kuch stones hain kuch pebbles hain to aap dekhoge ha kuch sort out karte hain kuch acche se chikne se dikh raha hai smooth se hain unko alag kar diya aur rough se alag kar diya there is no labeling but you are clustering it according to its similar features so the pattern observed might be the one which are known to the developer to so, jo observe kar rahi hai machine usme ho sakta hai ki pattern wo pehle se developer ko pata tha jabki usne usme feed nahi kiya hai or maybe a unique pattern come out of it so this is the example of clustering see 
there are a number of dogs all images are mixed means all different types of dogs are there with different different features and training data set uh, we are feeding in the machine is totally unlabeled and after the this uh, training if you will give any uh, testing data it will give you the result in this any of these two forms the first is showing the clustering with known data here you can see the color uh, uh, this size and the next one you showing uh, the result with the color feature so the clustering output based on patterns observed by the machine first one is, is the example of based on size and next one is the example of based on color as i have shown you this right here the clustering refers to the unsupervised learning algorithm which can cluster the unknown data according to the patterns or trend identified out of it jo picture hum usme dal rahe hain usme se wo khud wo feature sort out karega on which feature it can sort out sort out the data and then create the clusters so this is the example of unsupervised learning the first category clustering now the dimensionality reduction dimensionality reduction and this is another approach of unsupervised learning we humans are able to visualize up to three dimensions only we know we can visualize only three dimension but do you know there are a number of dimension available in different type of objects uh, huh. but according to a lot of theories and algorithm there are various entities which exist beyond three dimension you can see the picture can you decide how many dimensions are there no we cannot uh, uh, visualize this there are a number of dimensions in this image for example in natural language processing the words alphabets the words we are writing are considered to be n dimensional entities if we go in depth words are n dimensional entities and which means that we cannot visualize them as they exist beyond our visualization ability because we can visualize only 3d data three dimensional data and these words cannot be visualized because these words are beyond our visualization ability hence to make sense out of it we need to reduce their dimension so how to reduce the dimension and what will happen if we will reduce the dimension the dimensionality reduction algorithm will be used for this reduction how see the example this is the real ball which is three dimensional as we can see whenever we take any ball in our hand we can see the three dimension of it but if i will take its picture i have clicked the picture the picture is showing the flat image so data reduced now data transformed to 2d two dimensional why sorry two dimensional so it shows that this is the uh, in the process of dimensionality reduction the data lost kuch na kuch to yahan pe data loss hota hai but it is necessary to get some pattern out of it jaise hi aap data reduction karte chale jaoge you will get a pattern which will help you to train the machine to get the result for similar type of testing data so you can read the chapter to get better about these topics and you will not understand if you can try this with the examples online which are available to understand in depth and the last topic is evaluation evaluation is the testing stage when the your ai model is ready then you have to test it after training model is made then model is trained then proper testing is necessary why we need to test the data test the model we need the testing of ai model to calculate the efficiency and performance of the model if there is any mistake we have to try, uh, try to rectify it and if we think that it cannot be rectified then we have to find another algorithm another model to make the machine to, uh, to train the machine so testing uh, can be done with the help of testing data testing data is totally different from training data 
टेस्टिंग डेटा विच वॉज सेपरेटेड आउट ऑफ एक्वायर डेटा सेट एट डेटा एक्विजिशन स्टेज जब आप डेटा एक्विजिशन स्टेज पे जिन डेटा को यूज करके ट्रेनिंग करने जा रहे हो तो उसी में हम कुछ सेपरेट कर सकते हैं टेस्टिंग डेटा विच कैन बी यूज फॉर द इवोल्यूशन स्टेज स्टेज ऑफ ए आई मॉडल साइकिल ओके सो कैलकुलेटिंग द इफिशियंसी ऑफ द मॉडल हाउ कैसे करेंगे द इफिशियंसी ऑफ द मॉडल इज कैलकुलेटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ पैरामीटर्स एक्यूरेसी प्रिसीजन रिकॉल एंड एफ वन स्कोर नाउ दीज फोर पैरामीटर्स विल बी डिस्कस इन डिटेल इन चैप्टर सेवन so i am not taking it further i am stopping my session right now here and if you are having any doubt you can send me with the form or the comment or through whatsapp which i can take in the live session so please keep it in mind whenever we are taking any live session we will take the doubt classes only and the lesson you have to cover with this video lessons thank you read the chapter from the pdf book and then try to complete the assignment posted in the google classroom thank you bye bye